Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. This is Oxhorn, and I'm traveling right now. I've been away for a few days, but I'm going to be coming back tomorrow. And I produced a handful of videos to publish while I was away. This is one of them. And I figured I'd take the time today to talk a little bit about the Lucky 38 Casino Presidential Suite. This is a player home you get in Fallout New Vegas. It's one of the few viable player homes that you get, but even it is missing some things. We'll get to that in a minute. To gain access to the Lucky 38, you just follow the primary quest until you reach New Vegas and you have your first interview with Robert House. Regardless of how that conversation goes, after you finish it on your way out, Victor will take you aside and tell you that you now have access to the presidential suite. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the high roller suite. You can bring your friends, too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, you're the only one gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait in the suite. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. You can then use the elevator to go to the presidential suite with all of your companions. High roller suite. The presidential suite is spacious and beautiful. There are a number of different doors and they're all yours. Uh, this is the master bedroom here and uh, it's got a beautiful bed right here which will give you a well-rested bonus and plenty of storage. Uh, desks for storage, wardrobes for storage, lots of storage in this room and in many other rooms. You can get uh, magazines all over the place, uh, presumably from the previous owner. This is going to be a bathroom. Really nothing you want to do in here except uh, lots more storage. And of course, a big presidential suite as beautiful as this would have a bathroom. Over here, it's going to be a an uh, uh, this is a guest bedroom. This is where your companions would sleep, I suppose. Um, and uh, they will come in here and lay down and sleep, but even more storage if you need it. And then the final two rooms are over here. This is going to be a dining room slash workshop area. You'll notice that this is where <clears throat> we would we would have workshop items, but it's empty right now. We'll get to that in a second. And one fridge and uh, some uh, stove over there and some more storage. And then over here is the lounge room complete with a place for a dog to play on the ground and uh more storage items so it it looks pretty nice but it does have some frustrating limitations the way we upgrade it is by going to this terminal right here and unlike the fallout 3 player homes there are no themes with this player home. Instead, what we can do is we can purchase upgrades to suites. So let's focus on the master bedroom first. Let's take a look at it really quickly. Here's the master bedroom. We have some containers, but not a lot. There's one w wardrobe over here, one wardrobe over here, and uh, no weapon trunks or anything like that. So to upgrade this room, open the terminal, we go to the master bedroom, we can purchase two more wardrobes, two weapon trunks, and two suitcases. I'll just go ahead and get them all. And that's all of them. And there we go. They appear. So, we got plenty of storage. Two wardrobes, weapon trunks, and uh, suitcases. Where are the suitcases? There's the suitcase, and there's another one over here. Great. So, let's uh, take a look at the kitchen next kitchen right over here we've got one fridge and then this big empty space I'll show you the upgrades available there kitchen area we can get a workbench a refrigerator and two crafting lockers note that we don't get a reloading bench and it's a kitchen but we don't have a place to cook no hot plate no campfire nothing so we'll go ahead and get all of these and that's the last one Go back to the kitchen, and it's much better, right? We've got one workbench and then two workbench lockers. Unlike Fallout 4, the workbench is not going to automatically 
uh, fish for components from these lockers. So if you've got a recipe that you want to make and you don't have the, the items on hand, you do have to fish through the locker to get the item uh, before you can go back to the workbench and uh, craft the item. Uh, just a limitation of Fallout New Vegas. Uh, but no reloading bench, right? You know, the reloading thing for ammunition is one of the hallmark features of Fallout New Vegas. It adds a lot of interesting new gameplay to the game, but you don't have a reloading bench in your own player home. And the, th the reason that that is just boggles the mind, that and the cooking station, look, I've got two ovens here. I can't use either of them to cook anything. And there is a hot plate, but it's not the hot plate you can actually interact with to cook. It's one of those hot plates that you can loot. And the reason this is such a huge frustrating thing for me is because there are other places in the wasteland, in the Mojave wasteland, where you could go to just turn into a, a player home. It's not designed to be a player home, but um, it has everything you need, right? There are some shacks and even some places that come with DLCs that do have a hot plate, and they do have a reloading bench, and the workbench, and plenty of storage. And why can't you get any of that with this beautiful casino? That's just it's really frustrating to me. But there are ways to get around that that we will talk about in a little bit. Let's go back and see what other upgrades we can get. The guest room area. We can purchase two more wardrobes here. Let's take a look at it really quickly. Um, just so that you can get a before and after. Okay, this is the guest room area. Uh, they do have a locker in here, but we don't really have any wardrobes. Let's go purchase some. And there we go. We got some wardrobes. So now your companions can store their personal belongings. They won't really, you're gonna have to store stuff for them, but they will loot from your containers. One of the unique things about uh, the Lucky 38 Casino is it's the only place besides their home location where you can send your companions. So even the quote unquote player homes that you can get from the DLCs like uh, Big Mountain, The Sink and all of that, uh, those are great. They come with all of the crafting stations you need, but you can't send your companions there. So it's like there's nothing, there's no perfect player home. There's no uh, perfect player home that has all the crafting stations that you need and uh, that where you can send your companions, which is a, a bit of a, frustra a frustrating limitation. Uh, but let's see, the last one is the recreational room. Uh, we've got a sunset, sarsaparilla, a vending machine, a, a liquor cabinet, and a gnome. Yeah, let's take a look at it before. You can see this wall is pretty pretty bare, and over there it's pretty bare, but we do have a pool table, which is pretty stellar. Let's uh, purchase the final upgrades. And there we go. Here's our Sunset Sarsaparilla vending machine, which is just gorgeous. It doesn't chill your Sunset Sarsaparilla. That, that is annoying. Like... The, uh, we, we know from the previous two videos that I've done that the Nuka Cola machine that you get in Fallout 3 does chill your cola. Uh, but this one doesn't. It's just a storage container. In my game, I use it just to store all of my colas and beers and other beverages. And then here's a nice little gun cabinet if you want for guns or liquor. And then there's supposed to be a gnome. Where's the gnome? There he is. There. <laughs> Evil Gnome. I like how it, I like how the name. The name is Evil Gnome. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know why I'm, that's so funny, but it is. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's the Lucky Thirty Eight. It's fine. It's fine. It's certainly more beautiful than really any of the homes that we get in Fallout Three. It's more spacious than the Ten Penny Tower Suite, and it's uh, more attractive than the Megaton Suite. But you can't do everything that you need to here, which means that unless you, unless you find some other solution, you got to use the sink to uh, have an easily accessible reloading bench, or you got to lug all of your lead and casings around with you all the time so that when you find a reloading bench, you can reload or uh, 
store them here and make a special trip every time you want to go create more ammunition. So what I did is I managed to find some mods that fix that. Of course, of course this is fixed by the modding community. I, that's what I love about the, the modding community for Bethesda games. The mods fix the limitations that I have with it. So the first mod I want to talk about that I believe fixes the Lucky 38 and turns it into a viable player home is Lucky 38 Reloading and Cooking. This mod <laughs> adds a reloading bench here and a cooking hot plate over there. So this is before, let me get in the right spot here. This is before and this is after. I, I had it out of sight, but here it is, look. Now there's an electric hot plate right on top of the oven. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that you'd have to put an electric hot plate on top of the oven, but uh, I suppose they should have put it over here, but it works as a cooking station, which is exactly what you need. We were completely missing that. And then all the mod did is kind of rearrange things over here. It moved the two trunks over and then placed a reloading bench here so that now we can go through and deal with all of our ammunition, which is a, it's a, such a great gameplay feature. I love being able to edit, uh, to craft my own ammunition, but to not be able to do so in my own home, in my own workshop, is just, it, it's just infuriating. So that's an essential mod in my opinion, and it really makes this a viable one. But uh, let's talk about one other lore friendly mod that I think makes this place so much better. You know me, when I do my mods for Fallout 4, uh, I don't do anything crazy. I like lore-friendly mods that keep within the look and feel of the game and don't give you too much loot, don't change the gameplay dynamics, and don't break immersion, uh, for lack of a better word. And the same is true for New Vegas. So the one mod I want to talk about is Lucky 38 Lights. This mod just revamps the way lighting works in the Lucky 38 and changes a few things here and there. So I'm gonna show you before and after this mod is installed, room by room. Uh, let's see, so here's the rec room. There we go. Here's the rec room before and after. Here's the hallway before and after. Here's the dining room and workshop slash kitchen before. And after, the master bedroom before, and after, the guest bedroom before, and after, and the bathroom before, and after. And companions will walk around per usual. I only have three companions so far. I'm working on it. But uh, Boone should be walking around here somewhere. Just enjoying himself and having a good old time. I don't know where he is. We'll find him. But there you go. Yeah, I mean, I love... There he is. Boone's having a good old time. Just walk around and hey. enjoying himself. Hey. And I can tell Veronica to just... What's up? Why don't you go walk... Uh, relax a little bit. Feel free to relax. You sure? There, she puts on some better clothing and just goes and relaxes a bit. Uh, that's a mod, by the way. <laughs> anyway, there's another great mod called the Lucky 38 Suite Expansion, and it does a whole lot more to the Lucky 38, but it was a bit too extreme for my taste. Um, it just it just made the Lucky 38 a little bit too lavish. Um, it, it's pretty lavish already, in my opinion. So I wanted to keep it the way it was, the look and feel that it had. I just wanted to improve some of the hey. visuals a little bit and make it more practical, which is why I installed the mods that I did. Uh, but yeah, uh, just take a look at the, the description of this video if you're interested in any of the Lucky 38 mods that I'm using. I like uh, the player homes. What are you doing? Is she looking at the photograph over here? I like the player homes that you can find in some of the DLCs, but really nothing feels like New Vegas to me more than the Lucky 38. It's my favorite, so this is my player home, and that's what I had to do to make it practical. I've got my electric hot plate, and I've got my reloading bench, and I couldn't be happier. Well, uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. As I said at the beginning of this video, I, uh, I've been traveling for the past couple of days, but I'm going to be back tomorrow. So, uh, well, today, 
I'm back today working on my video for tomorrow today. But anyway, uh, expect a return to our regularly scheduled programming tomorrow. If you want to make sure that you don't miss tomorrow's video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop if you're interested in checking out some of my Fallout and Oxhorn inspired t-shirts. You can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I forgot. To... Is that the only one? That's the only one. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.